So what I really wanted to lead up to was fast versus slow fading. So we've shown that by combining multipath signal that changes with time. <coughs> so the question is, how quickly does the signal change? Um, the issue is, if, uh, if the signal changes very, very quickly, <coughs> Well, it's actually not clear what's what's worse. Uh, it, it, intuitively, if the if you would think that if the signal changes very very quickly, that would be bad because you have this, this wildly oscillating signal, and uh, uh, it's not it wouldn't be clear how to compensate for that. So uh, it turns out that that is actually a desirable case. Uh, the bad the the worst case you can have is if the signal is actually changing very slowly. And we'll see why in a second. So how quickly does the signal change? Um, just to consider this from the perspective of a packet. So this will be. Um, Figure one in your notes. So we've got, uh, I'm going to depict a packet this way. Here's a packet that contains some sort of data cargo. It's got, uh, let's say, uh, a typical packet will, let's say, have 1,024 bits. So if the so how do we how do we uh, how do we send bits? Uh, those of you who've taken digital communications will know this. But what we'll do is we'll, we'll basically represent, let's say, uh, a zero as a high voltage. <coughs> so this will be like uh, signal strength with respect to time. Uh, zero will be a positive voltage. One will be a minus voltage. So. there will be 1,024 of those in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this by the signal strength. So we have a certain amplitude here, and here's my time. So we start with, uh, we start with a certain signal strength, and if it changes, if it changes significantly within the packet interval, <coughs> significant change within the packet. We'll call this fast fading. <coughs> On the other hand, let's draw another packet over here. Imagine uh, this amplitude being multiplied by each of these uh, each of these bits. It's another packet of 1,024 bits, but now the amplitude will stay relatively constant over the duration of that packet. So we could we could start out with a high value, or we could start out with a very low value. So no significant change. <laughs> Sit in the packet. We'll call that slow fading.
So which of these do you think is better? Slow. Slow. So a lot of people said slow, and I heard at least one person say fast. So it turns out fast fading is better, and here's why. Over here, if you start out with a high amplitude, that's great. So uh, uh, your signal strength will remain high throughout this packet, and each of the bits will be distinguished. <coughs> so usually what you'll do is, um, very crudely, you'll observe each bit as it arrives. And if, you're, if the signal you observe is positive, you'll decide it's a zero. And if it's negative, you'll decide it's a one. And the noise, uh, there'll be a certain constant noise that will, that will screw up your decision. So if the signal strength is strong, you will get very few errors. On the other hand, if you start out here, your signal strength is very low, and it doesn't change over the course of the packet. So there will likely be a lot of errors, and you'll probably have to throw out that packet. On the other hand, if it's fast fading, if you get a lot of a lot of changes in the fate in the uh, in the amplitude throughout the course of the packet, what ends up happening is that on average, you you see you a certain percentage of the packet has a high signal strength, and at a few points, you have a low signal strength. But you're reasonably assured that if you wait a few more bits, you'll start having a high signal strength again. So it's possible to design an error correcting code to recover those bits that, you, that, that, that get lost in these low signal strengths. So on average, you expect that most of these packets will not be rejected. Whereas over here, if you start out with a low signal strength, that packet's pretty much guaranteed to be rejected. Well, we're assuming we're not using the amplitude if it's a zero or one. Pardon me? Like we're not using the amplitude to know if it's a one or a zero. It's just showing us the energy needed. Yeah, so what you can do at the, at the receiver is uh, is normalize the amplitude, like basically amplify it to the point where the effect of the amplitude is negative. Okay. <coughs> so if signal changes much more quickly than the packaging. signal strength, you could be waiting a very, very long time before it, it, uh, it climbs enough that you can use the channels on the order of uh, 10 